while there's some ways to make a data lake operate like a data warehouse, I think that the data warehouse use case is always going to be there. A data warehouse is always going to be a really high performance SQL engine that can support, you know, hundreds or even thousands of concurrent users submitting SQL queries at a time. Welcome to another episode of Data Strategy Unraveled. I'm your host, Kendra Reed, Principal Data Strategy Tech Specialist here at AWS. And today we're going to be discussing data lakes and data warehouses, and then how they both can come together with a lake house. And to help us with this discussion, I have Tony Stricker here. Hey, Tony, how you doing? What's up, Kendra? How are you? Doing good, man. I'm doing good. Appreciate you joining us today. Um, how about you tell the viewers a little bit about yourself and where you're joining us from? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Tony Stricker. I am, like you, Kendra, a principal technologist on the data strategy team. Uh, I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. I was born, raised, and, and still live here. Um, and I have a background as a data warehouse architect and a, a data scientist, uh, sort of across industries, the heavy emphasis on financial services. So I've uh, been in AWS for about three years, and I'm super happy to be here. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're happy to have you here. Happy to have you here. Mm -hmm. So the discussion today is really around data lakes versus data warehouses versus a lake house, right? And so we want to really want to start with what is a data where, excuse me, data warehouse, and how does this differ from a database? Yeah, sure. Um, so you know, data warehouses have really been around uh, for not that, not much shorter of a time than actually the the relational database, right? Um, so relational database, you can think of companies using to run, uh, you know, their operational data data ops, <laughs> right? That uh, things like keeping track of transactions, uh, customer orders, customer information. Um, you know, companies have used been using relational databases for decades, right? And um, data warehouses came around uh, out of this need for companies to actually perform more of analysis on their structured relational data coming from these these operational OLTP databases, right? Um, when I say OLTP, I mean operate online transactional processing, which is what your uh, your traditional relational database is really optimized for, right? Um, uh, taking care of transactions, inserts, updates, deletes, right? And companies wanted to start analyzing the data from their OLTP systems. And to do that, they... Uh, you know, this this concept of a data warehouse developed. It's more of an OLAP system or an online analytic processing system. Um, I like to think of a data warehouse as just a really, really big database on steroids, right? It's got a slightly different architecture under the covers, meaning it, it stores and indexes data slightly differently. But a data warehouse still maintains relational concepts. Um, it's just like a really big database on steroids that's optimized for reads as opposed to transactions or, or writes. Okay. Okay. That's, yeah, that's a really good way of thinking about that. And when we're thinking about the data warehouses, kind of where does that data lake come into play? What, I guess really starting with what is a data lake? Can you help us there? Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, data lakes, uh, you can think of them as, as really distributed file systems. They store their data as a file. Um, and a data lake kind of came out of this need. Um, it was almost like an evolution from the data warehouse where companies had gotten, you know, had, had been using data warehouses to perform analysis on big structured relational data. And, um, you know, uh, the big data movement of the you know late 2000s came around and, and, you know, companies started to realize that there was value in unstructured data that their business operations uh, were generating. Right. And. Uh, the problem was that this, the amount of data that they were generating was drastic, was increasing at a much more uh, higher rate than their ability to store it, right? And, and traditionally, data warehouses, which are great for storing structured relational data, um, can be more on the expensive side traditionally to store that structured data in an optimized way. And so a data warehouse, while you know not only not being able to support unstructured or, or some semi-structured data, um, was cost prohibitive to just store data in and then try to figure out what you were going to do with the data later, right? So the data lake kind of came out of this need for companies to store really, really large amounts of unstructured, high volume data that didn't really have a that didn't really have a structure that lent itself to a data warehouse, and maybe they didn't even really know how to use that data at at the time, but they wanted to store it because they knew it would be valuable at, at some point in the future, right? So. Uh, I guess in a nutshell, right, a, a data lake is 
uh, a distributed file system that can store data as a file, as opposed to blocks on disk like a data warehouse. Um, and it's it's great for storing structure, unstructured or semi-structured type data. Okay. Yeah, that's that's some good information on like the distinction between the two. I like how you clarify that about traditionally it's usually a lot more expensive to run a data <laughs> warehouse. I know nowadays the way things are going is is, is uh, very comparative in some aspects there. So and I guess along those same Absolutely. lines, can you use a data lake just like a data warehouse or do I need both or kind of where does that, how do, how do you distinguish between the two when you're looking at, you know, your use cases and stuff? Yeah, sure. So, you know, at AWS, we really like to take a, a use case based approach to architecture, right? And and I think um, while there's some ways to make a data lake operate like a data warehouse, I think that the data warehouse use case is always going to be there. A data warehouse is always going to be a really high performance SQL engine that can support, you know, hundreds or even thousands of concurrent users submitting SQL queries at a time, right? And by high performance SQL engine, I mean a, a, a SQL engine that can return um, you know, really large data sets with, that are really based on SQL queries that have really complex join patterns and and scan really large um, structured data sets very quickly and efficiently, right? So I think that data warehousing use case will always be there for things like you know business intelligence and 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 such and stuff like that, right? Um, what we're seeing recently, um, the past few years, is this this concept of a data lake house, right? A data lake house architecture where you have your structured relational data in a data warehouse, and then you're storing your business-related, semi-structured, unstructured data in your data lake, and then using utilities at runtime to submit queries that join data that's in your data warehouse with data that's in your data lake, right? And uh, an example of a use case for this might be a situation where you have customer data stored in your, uh, in your data warehouse, and you've been capturing tweets uh, or you have unstructured documents that you're storing in your data lake and you want to submit a query that joins that customer data with their related unstructured data in the data lake at runtime, right? That sort of was the, the, the foundation of this data, lake, this data lake house architecture concept, right? And sort of where we've seen that move in the past few years is more of, um, you know, as I mentioned before, where a data warehouse is, is still capable of, of processing transactions like inserts, updates, and deletes, similar to a, a standard you know, operational relational database. Um, you know, data lakes traditionally where they've stored their data in files don't support those types of operations. However, over the past few years, we've seen things like uh, the development of open table formats. And open table formats are a way that are, are software layer essentially that allows the data lake house or data lake to support ACID type transactions. And by ACID, I mean those things like insert, updates, and deletes. Um, similar to how a data warehouse would support that at a transactional row-based level, we're seeing that support in a data lake house now, right? So um, while I still think that both serve their own purposes, right? I think that um, over the past few years, we've been starting to see this line that's blending the difference between a data warehouse and a data lake, right? Um, so it's been interesting. Okay. Okay. And you, you talked a little bit about those transactional formats there, uh, that yeah. support those, those assets, uh, transactions, what, what kind of formats is that the software libraries that, that are utilized there? Yeah. So there's things, uh, um, open source table formats, such as Apache hoodie, uh, Apache iceberg, um, you know, uh, Databricks has their Delta table format. Right. And, and really what these are is, um, a way of registering metadata, about the data in your data lake uh, in a way that represents a table and then performing operations on that table in such a way that you know you can insert, update and delete existing rows in that table. And those sort of data, um, call them uh, data operations are, are supported by the open table format software on the back end, right? So it's allowing you to interact with data that's in your data lake similar to the way that you would interact with it in a data warehouse or okay. even a relational database. Okay. Okay. So I guess with that, does that mean that I don't necessarily have to make a choice when I'm trying to decide with my use case, if I need a data lake or data warehouse, or mm -hmm. like you mentioned the lake house approach or should I just yeah. use lake house all the time? Or what is the, the best way to, to go about that? You know, it's, it's a really great question. Right. And I think that, um, you know, to, to, 
you know, the, what I just mentioned, right? The, using open table formats in a data lake to support ACID transactions, insert updates and deletes, right? That enables things like incremental loads from a source system, right? Like rather than replicating an entire source system every time you want to move data or hydrate your data lake, you can enable change data capture on your source system, identify what rows have changed uh, or been deleted or updated, right? And then you can, you know, do that incremental change or replication to your data lake, right? With these new open table formats, which is really great, right? Um, especially if you have source data that has like an evolving schema, right? The schema is changing in an ongoing basis, right? Like that would be a great use case for, um, you know, an open, an open table format in a data lake house architecture. Um, however, that kind of operation has been possible in data warehouses for decades, right? I mean, it's it's the the OLTP incremental or OLTP um, operations, uh, even though they're not optimized for it, but transaction level operations in a data warehouse have been supported for decades, right? Right. So, it really comes down at the end of the day to the use case and whether um, you know the the right architecture that's going to fit your needs for the long run right and the best architecture that fits the capabilities and and skill sets of your team right so um you know if you, all of your data sources are relational structured in in format right you might be well served by just a data warehouse um, but if you anticipate using semi-structured structured data uh, semi-structured or unstructured data sources that require incremental data capture you might lend yourself better to a, a open table format approach in a data lake, right? So at the end of the day, it really depends on the use case. And that's what's so great about the cloud, Kendra, is we can test and learn with tools and build, uh, you know, build the architecture that meets the needs of our specific use case. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the common points that we heard, touched on in one of our first videos around modern data strategy around starting with that use case and then working backwards and understanding what are the tools and technologies needed in order to accomplish those goals that you set forth for that use case. Uh, so thank you so much, Tony, for, for joining us today and providing us with all of this insightful information. Uh, for our viewers, definitely check out our playlists uh, below on the other data strategy and rival videos that we have, um, especially around that modern data strategy, modern data community. Um, and we look forward to having you again at some point, Tony, as well as our viewers looking forward to seeing you again in our next Data Strategy Unravel episode. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Henry.